Kailang step na ba tayo? <laughs> Ito na ba yun? Sosunod. <laughs> Hoy, ate, ate, Julia, come here. Tayo up. Ate, come here. Ate, so why are we just entering from? Wasn't actually ready to entrance into the cave. Can anyone give a guess whereabouts in this uh, chamber where the original entrance was? Should be up there. Back here? Not quite. Any other guesses? Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, we call this one our solution pipe, but in the 1900s it was known as the wind hole. So, you might have noticed that uh, coming through those first um, metal gates that there was quite a bit of wind, yeah. and that's the cave breathing. Mm -hmm. So, that hence why it's making all that wind come out of our hole here. That's how they could discover it. So in the early caving days, in the early 1900s, they used to do only go cave, go down all the caves with candle lanterns. Oh. And with candles and wind, it doesn't quite match. So they had to wait till technology could progress to come down and explore this cave. Mm. So in 1957, a man called Cliff Spackman adventured down our hole. Now there's 12 meters of limestone just above us. And when Cliff came down, he only had 12 meters of rope tied around his waist. So our hole is not just a straight drop, it kind of dog legs and weaves about. So he wouldn't have been able to make it too far into this cave. And his head would have only just spoke, uh, poked out of the end here. And because their torch is not as half as great as the ones that we've got today, he would have roughly seen about seven meters of this giant chamber. It was absolutely amazing what he found. Well, anyway, our solution pipe was created by our tree roots. So just next, next to it, we've got, uh, we believe, a dead Mary tree. And then just here is our carry tree. Do you guys know what a carry tree is? No, so you, you'll see as you drive along down here, the really tall, white, silvery barked uh, trees, they are our carry ones. They're really straight, they could be more straight, mm -hmm. very large trunk. And they're only found in this part of the world. And then we've got all our little peppy trees here. So once upon a time, there was a tree root growing down and then the tree died and then over time, it um, degraded away, leaving a small hole. And then due to erosion from like wind, rain, animals, the hole just got bigger and bigger. So now we have a metal grate over the top of it, stopping any animals from coming into the cave. Because you imagine having a snake fall, and fall down, that would be a bit shocking. <laughs> it won't be coming down now, I promise. I think you'll just get a bit of that sand. <coughs> So if we have a look up the top here, we have what we call stalactites. Now these basically just hold on nice and tight to our cave ceiling and they grow down. And the ones that grow from the ground up, we call these ones stalactites. And they might eventually reach the cave ceiling. Sometimes for over hundreds of thousands of years, they join together and they create a column. So that's what we've got behind us. Microscopic layer. If we just take a look behind us over here, we have 
got another formation. They're really thin ones. Do you all see them? So we call these ones straws, and they're just like drinking straws. They are hollow inside. Uh, but these ones are very, very thin and fragile. So I probably wouldn't want to have my iced coffee with them, because no doubt if they would snap. The longest one we've got there is roughly around 5.43 metres long. So this is actually our longest straw that we 